everyone! In the previous video, we've built a layer management system for our Fabric.js Canvas application using React, covering tracking layers with state, assigning unique IDs, updating Z indexes, and managing layers section. In this second part, I will show you how to make your layers panel more interactive by adding buttons to move the selected layer up or down in the Z index order. This will give users more control over overlapping objects on the canvas. By adding these features, you will enhance the app's usability and learn how to extend your panel with features like locking layers, temporarily hiding them, duplicating or deleting objects. Let's start with a function. Let's give it a simple and clear name. Move selected layer. Now, since we have already set up a function for selecting and deselecting layers, and we are tracking the selected layer using React state like this, we can easily work with it. First, we need to check if there is a selected layer. If there is a selected layer, there is no reason to continue, so we add this condition. This ensures that we don't run into issues if no object is selected on the canvas. Next, let's grab all the objects on the canvas. This gives us an array of all the layers or objects that are on the canvas. We need to find a specific object that matches the selected layer's ID. Objects find goes through each object in our array, one by one. For each object, it checks whether the ID of that object matches selected layer, the ID of the layer that user just selected. The find method will stop and return the first object that meets this condition. If we get a match, it assigns this object to the object's variable. If it doesn't find a match, it returns undefined. Ok, if we find the object, we can get its current position in the stack. Now let's handle the movement. If we want to move the object up in the stack, we first check that the object isn't already at the top. We do a quick swap by temporarily storing the object in temp constant, moving the object right above it down one position, and then placing our selected object into that higher spot. This quick swap effectively moves the object one step closer to the top without disturbing any other layers. For moving down, we do a similar check to make sure that the object isn't at the bottom. After moving the object, we need to update the canvas to reflect the changes. But first, we should save the current background color so it doesn't get lost when we clear the canvas. Now, let's clear the canvas and re-add the objects in their new order. Then, we restore the background color and re-render the canvas. We also need to update the Z-index for all objects. The Z-index determines which objects are on top of others, so we make sure that the objects reflect their new order in the stack. Next, we set the selected object as the active one again, so that the user's selection stays active. Finally, we update the layers list to reflect the new order. You can find more about the update layers function in the previous video. And that's the core of the move selected layer function. It allows us to move the selected layer up or down in the stack by updating the canvas and re-rendering everything with the correct z-index. Now let's connect this function to the UI so user can interact with it. Here's how we can do that with two buttons, one to move the layer up and one to move it down. These buttons call the move selected layer function when clicked, either moving the selected layer up or down. We also add logic to disable the buttons if there is no selected layer or if the layer is already at the top or the bottom of the stack. And that's it, with these changes we've added the ability to reorder layers in the canvas. In this way, you can also create a simple functions to hide, delete or lock selected layers with just few lines of code. Just remember to store initial properties of the object in the state, like its original opacity so you can restore it later if needed. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please leave a like and comment below. I might share the code on my web course page, so stay tuned. One more update, I'm also experimenting with a new format and content covering lifestyle topics like taxes, healthcare and requirements for moving to countries like Taiwan or Germany. My first video will be about Taiwan, where I currently live, so if you have any topic suggestions, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.